Circle City. I ain't gonna hold you. That shit is so monumental. The first four bars, the first four bars will forever last in the culture. Facts. As as those those are what you call classic, not just classic times, but classic bars. Cause you'll never forget that. The varsity letterman. And I got the varsity letterman in this motherfucker. My motherfucking brother. You know what I mean? The nigga that put me on to real weed. I always gotta say that. You know what I mean? Um, the nigga that taught me weed, period. One of my mentors, one of the greatest people on the planet, the motherfucking emperor, the overlord, the perp invader, the big perp invader. Hello. He goes by the name of Shice Bob. Shice fucking Bob's ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it was goody. You already fucking word. know. It's the fucking word. <laughs> <laughs> it's a personal party. It's That's a, a fact. It's a per- fucking right. You know, you know. <laughs> In case, hey, oh, let me do my thing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. If you've been smoking rock or been under a rock, you are now tuned into the personal party podcast. I am the Kush God Smoke Dizza. That's the piece of shit show Broadway, Broadway, really? Broadway show nameth. Heard you know what I mean? And, um, you know, the personal party podcast isn't just based on just talking to niggas that got albums and shit coming out or talking to niggas that can get us clickbaits. I don't give a fuck about that. I want to talk to my family. I want to talk to people that shift the culture. Shift the I, culture. I know I have a different perspective. Okay, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Because... Thank you, Rich. When we move in the camera, because I'm producer. just I'm just talking. We, we I'm just you, shout Rich. out to Richie Blanco. You know what I mean? Make sure make sure you give me my good side. Um, you know I want to talk to people that actually move the culture, and people that you know it's a difference when somebody else is having a conversation, and it's a different when it's a it's a big difference when I'm having a conversation, because I come from a different angle with it. Not only am I an artist, but I actually have personal relationships. But everybody that I, I, I talk to, and um, this is somebody that that's current in my in my life since I could remember, and um, it just makes sense to have the legend, you know what I mean, grace his presence, and Shiggity. we and we do this the right way. What's up, Shiggity? What's up, my brother? You already know in the building. You know what I'm smoking, never joking. Always, always. Shiggity. Always the, the you know, Mister. Thank don't you for get... the alkalate. I appreciate it. You know? I mean, you know, this is just regular. You know, you know I, t- I tell you the shit on the phone, but you tell me the shit in real time. You know, what I mean, I, I just, I just had to do that just so you know we get people up to speed with what's going on, right, and so people know exactly what time it is. Um, this is our second time doing this interview because I felt like the first time we did it, we was doing it prematurely on like my my iPad and like mad stupid shit. We couldn't get it scored the way it should be scored. Right. So now we have the proper team, got the team together. You know what I mean? I had to make sure I get my brother back up here so we can get this out for the people because this narrative... And do it right, you heard? You know what I mean? This this narrative that, that this brother shares is a very, very important narrative, very, very important perspective. And... um. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? I, it's a cloudy session, man. It's, it's, it's always cloudy, but it's extra cloudy, it's extra when, cloudy. When, when I'm with Big Bro. You yes, know what I mean? Sir. Like I said, he was the nigga that introduced me to real weed. I want to start with the real weed that I was introduced to. Okay. So it was this, it was an era in the culture, not only New York City, but I, I want to say around the world. And it was only one place that you can come get this particular weed from mm. that will make it official outside of Miami. Let them know. I'm talking about Broadway. I'm talking about the piff. I'm talking about the person that invented, created the word piff. Um, This is not just an accolade that he claims. This is in the Urban Dictionary. You look it up, his name is there. I always thought that that was the coolest shit in the world to me. Mm -hmm. And um, around, I want to say, 04, 05, when Purple Haze was reigning supreme, in the weed culture and in the world, um, I had the honor of being next to my brother that, you know, this was this was his thing. And it was just, it was the A-plus batch. It was the 550 batch. It was everything, kid. You feel me? And this is when I officially graduated from smoking Reggie because that was the original smoker kit for at least me. 
You know what I mean? Me too, nigga. From the hood, we were smoking beef and brock. Beef and brock was exotic to us. That, that was exotic, nigga. Right? And then when we started- Piece start, with the chocolate. Right. And then, you know, if you didn't know nobody, you was on post or familiar, yeah. you had to go up there and be a Vic. That's- <laughs> Facts, nigga might Take hit you chances. with, nigga might hit you with the rabbit food. Now listen, but I had the honor. Still going on. I had the honor of having Big Bro, that he put me on. I didn't have to go outside to go do that. You a lucky person though. Yeah, I mean, not everybody's like you, brother. Yeah, but but you know, I'm just I'm just painting the picture. Nah, I'm with you. Just painting the picture. Um, around that time, Shiggy, how did you get introduced to Purple Haze? How did I get introduced, introduced to Purple Haze? I got introduced to Purple Haze in like 1992, right? Haze been out since 92? 92. 92. That since nigga 88. said 1988. It's been out since 88. They had, they had another name for it? It was called, Um, it originally was called Grippy. Grippy. From Miami, started, right? It started in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Then it migrated to Miami and, you know, Spanish culture. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Bugsy. Mm. So that's that's where that all really originated. Niggas mm-hmm. been smoking Crippy in Miami since the early 90s, 95. But in New York, uptown or Audubon, you know, they was known for that. Facts. You know what I'm saying? They got introduced, I guess, through the Coke game. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, when you buy the Coke, they be like, yo, you got to buy this weed too. <laughs> <laughs> Like you, like you Z-boner. got to. <laughs> you know, like, they came up with the, they yeah. came up with the seedless weed and all that. So yeah. this was uh, their seedless weed. This was uh, their hydro. It was product. an advertisement. This was yeah. nah, nah. It wasn't advertisement. This was different weed. This was you know up top niggas is used to smoking brick weed with seeds and sticks. Facts, and this, facts. And this weed don't got no seeds. The stems is real thin. You know what I'm saying? Yo, like I'm gonna get back on gear, but you just gave me an idea. Now, I remember, like, I was too young to be in the Branson era, right? What was the Branson weed like for, for, for niggas my era and, and under that that don't, that hear the stories but don't know what that is? It was was that seedless weed too? Or was so, that... The thing with Branson weed, right? And I'm going to keep it real, like, when I was young, I told you I've been smoking really since 91, right? So, 90. I've been smoking weed since 90. So... I was always really like the person that would go to the weed spot because a lot of niggas would be scared to go to the weed spot. They look too young right. to go to the mm. weed spot. Right, right, you know right. What I'm, I'm you with had, you. You had to carry yourself a certain, certain way. way. Otherwise, otherwise, they'd be like, nah, you can't come Turn in. Turn your ass around. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'll be the person to always go to the weed spot and go cop. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So Branson weed, there was two different batches. It was like the the bags, the, the triangle, triangle bags. The triangle bag. Mm-hmm. But if you was getting money, you get the jars. That was a whole different batch. Mm. I didn't know that. You know, I didn't, see, I didn't, know, I didn't know that. You know, the apes and all that. It, it wasn't no apes back then, though. Right, right. It was right. Jaws. It was Sax and Jaws. That's something pause. That, I, that I introduced to the game. Mm. You know, in, New York, in New York, in the streets of Harlem, quarters. Really, it was quarters. It wasn't apes because apes was too small. You know, mm. make it a quarter water B. Quarter water B. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> shout, out, shout, out to, shout out to Jim Jones. Shout out to the Taliban. You know what I'm saying? Because there was a lot of factors. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. Niggas been selling drugs forever. Like mm-hmm. niggas been smoking weed forever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the way it was it was situated was kind of like the Jamaicans had the chocolate. Right. Spanish niggas had the pude, aka the crippy. But mm-hmm. in New York it changed to something else. Mm. You know, be, you know we the give name, our names. The name, the name changed. Right. Mm. And the Dominicans had it. It wasn't the Puerto Ricans who introduced it to us. It was really the Dominicans who had it up right. on Broadway. You right, know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So, right. 100%. my situation was kind of like, you know, we smoking weed. It's really drug dealer weed. Like, niggas who buy drugs. Right. It right. ain't really like the average go to the spot and go cop a nick. It's I not the, <laughs> this, yeah, this is not the for everybody weed. This is not the for everybody weed because right. this is, a, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is like for the neighborhood people who right. get put on to go in there. Hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Botanica, hmm. fucking, it's mad spots. Botanica, the Botanica, but that's, Botanica, but that's the most famous one though. Like mm. Indoors, like you go in the spot, it's Botanica. They got to know you. You know what I'm saying? They got the fuzzy and the super fuzzy. You know what I'm saying? Talk your shit, bro. Then they can't really speak English that good, so they call it Pepperhead, which is Purple Haze. Pepperhead was another term for purple. Like they said, 
Pepe. Mm-hmm. But they really saying Purple Haze. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, the, this was some fucked up shit. You dig what I'm saying? The streets take on his own brand, yeah. B. Right. So, so when I got empowered with the, with the bud, you know what I'm saying? Because I always, since day one, I used to live upstate New York, Ithaca, New York. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And when I got up there in like 9-1, you know, I, I, I straight linked with the hippies and the growers and all that. These niggas are doing some different type of time. Hmm. They talking about quarters and eighths. I'm like, what's that? We only right. got nicks, dimes, fifties, and hundreds. Right, mm. right. A right. zip, like a zip back then, you know, it was a little different. You get a zip, seventy five dollars, fifty dollars. That's a fact. Some Reggie, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Some but we always Reggie. made money on some the breakdown. Ari, some yeah. Ari, right? You know seventy five dollars for the Ari ounces yeah. back then. So not for nothing. B, my man, who's over there, mm-hmm. right? He was like, I mean, fucking with the haze. I'll copy for him, you know what I mean? Because I was always outside, you know what I mean? Going to old spots, find, trying to find the gas. Then when I got a little older, I used to have my little mans, you know what I mean? Go find the gas. Where the gas at? You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Mm-hmm. Niggas go find the gas. Be like, this spot got it. Briggs. It's a bad spot. There's so many spots. But my favorite spot back in the day was Maddie. Autobahn 174. Autobahn 174. Legendary. Legendary. That's, That's like... That was the hub. That's my favorite spot. In high school, one of my like one of my homies, you know what I'm saying, that like I used to go to school with, mm-hmm. his brother owned a spot on 163rd in, in Fort Washington. Okay. Fort Washington. Yeah, I know the niggas. Yeah, yeah, I got you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Know, that yeah. was the um the Hawaiian. They had the Hawaiian uptown. That was mm. their spot that everybody knew it was famous. You know what I'm saying? For the exotic. So, you know, I always been on on, on some Broadway shit. Mm-hmm. Really, mm-hmm. Broadway was my was nigga. exotic. And I ain't gonna lie, Branson, Branson wasn't one of them spots that everybody could even get into. Right. You gotta be a certain person. Yeah, you, you gotta know somebody. You gotta think you know somebody. Or know, think you know because somebody. Because there was right. somebody who ran the door that niggas thought was Branson that wasn't even Branson. Mm. <laughs> you take what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Boy was like Kaiser Sosa, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but I ain't gonna lie, from Broadway, so I really wasn't smoking that because to me that weed was like, like Canadian. But to to the hood, that was niggas never had that type of weed. So it was A1 like type lime shit, yeah. green, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a different type of smoke. It wasn't that sweet, sweet shit. It was that like piney so, shit. So so it was like you know, orangey shit. It was like BC, Orange. like Dro. Yeah. Like drove before good Jack Herrera like before PG. niggas knew what Jack Herrera was and could shit on it type shit. Type Jack shit. Herrera before Jack Herrera. Exactly. Okay, okay. Cause I always wanted to know. I always me wanted and my to niggas know. Niggas used to be like, when niggas would come to the crib with the Branson, we'd be like, we'd just start laughing at niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we smoking this, nigga. High powered. Mm. And I come from the underworld, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Of like hustling and shit like that. So all the niggas that I knew that was getting money and I bring the weed through. Them niggas be zonked off one blunt. Them niggas be dead. Like yo, why you be bringing that shit from Broadway? That shit, that shit crazy. <laughs> Go nigga. get some skunk from the yard, nigga, up the block. Like yeah, nah, I ain't yeah. smoking that. Niggas was thinking niggas was lacing that, that type shit. shit. Get, that shit giving me yeah, a headache, my nigga. Niggas too high. That shit got my head. That shit, I don't like that regular weed. shit. I never smoked regular weed in my life with Shiggy ever. I don't even think I've ever seen him smoke regular weed ever. I smoke. It's regular, always I been smoke pounds out. of regular weed, bro. I'm a, you know, I'm a weed connoisseur. So I went through all the errors, you know what I'm saying? Chocolate, skunk, uh, no, I got a bag of gold, chocolate out there too. Uh, Dabla, you know what I'm saying? Mm. All types pellet. of shit. Pellet, the jack. Come on, you, you listen, man. Well, we you know, know I don't. Talking you know, you know shit. I don't. Nah, I'm, 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 just speak, I'm just speaking <laughs> so the people can hear it. I'm passionate about weed. I'm with you. Because my father's from the islands, he's from Trinidad. So, you know, I'm not trying to glorify this or be like, like, you know, but I've been smoking really since I was a little nigga, like fucking six years old, my nigga. You dig? Not weed, but cigarettes. I was the little bad nigga you see walking down the block smoking a cigarette, like, where's his mother? I wanna beat that kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, dead ass. And if you would approach me and be like, hey little boy, what are you doing smoking that cigarette? I'd be like, fuck, you suck my dick. Kiss my New York shit. You, what? Fast. Fast. You know, potty you mouth, suck nigga. My dick fast. Crazy. My pops was a wicked nigga with his mouth. He was, a, you know what I mean? He used to hire and fire niggas in his job. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that shit just kind of was just... Rubbed really, down on you. Very yeah. aggressive since I was young with the words, you know? But I'm also very polite, very respectful. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and one of the first the first and only niggas I know that's actually good in tennis. This, oh, this, on, this is... 
I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta. This is a hidden skill. Yo, my nigga, that's crazy. This nigga, now, this nigga's skill Arthur Ashe. The, the hidden skill, it ain't really tennis. Well, it's not only it's tennis. It's deeper than tennis. It's deeper than tennis. Tennis, tennis was a subliminal skill that I picked up to front on, to front on your classmates. To front on my classmates because they right. used to think that they, they was, they <laughs> the Ivy money. League white boys. They thought they yeah. was doing something. And so, and so, you know, they came to my crib and they seen where I lived and it was like, oh shit. This nigga from the we, hood. We no. We we know you from the hood. That's mm-hmm. what that was the whole thing. Right. But then when they came to my crib and seeing how I lived in the hood, they was like, in my family, they was like, Oh nah, this nigga living better than us. Yeah, he uh, I heard you. This nigga's fucking Theo Huxtable. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this nigga was white. <laughs> Look at it. I'm black as tall, nigga. You dig what I'm saying? Yo. So you know, that's what I'm saying. Some of my passions, it ain't, I don't have hood dreams. I don't have a competitive spirit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, my competitive spirit is like with myself. Hmm. You dig what I'm saying? And my connection to the universe. Hmm. So I'm never really like, people might think that I'm competing with people because I trap. And when Hmm. I say trap, I don't mean like hustle. I mean like collect things, Hmm. trappings. Hmm. Like, one of my favorite shows growing up as a kid was Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Hmm. And they'd be like, Robert Leach was like, yeah, millionaire with his trappings, blah, 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 blah. And I used that word trappings, used to, that shit was like the dopest word to me. That's why I'm a That's real crazy. trap nigga. That's, That's crazy. crazy. You dig what I'm saying? That's so, crazy. yo, it's crazy because you got, you got the That's trappings crazy. from Robin Leach. And then yeah. I remember, you know, you always tell me about the story when your aunt took you to London. Yeah, she's not London, but all over well, Europe. Well, all over Europe. Yeah. And that's where you got the word swag. Yes. And, and you guys were using the word swag in a different pretense than, than we use it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Explain that for me. So back in 1988, all right? This is how long ago this shit go back, right? My aunt, she was a buyer for the Saks Fifth Avenue. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? She took me on, and her husband was a, um, a traveling salesman. You dig what I'm saying? So we went, she took me mm-hmm. to Europe. You know, on a, like a world tour type of thing. We went to eight countries. You know what I'm saying? Every country that we went to to go get clothes and stuff like that, my aunt would always be hyped. Like, I can't wait to go to this fashion house and see what swag bags they have for us. Swag bag. I'm like, bag. swag bag. And that was just like the gift bag with the free shit in it. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? So as I got older, me and my crew, I used to always say to the niggas like, yo, your swag is in there. Garbage. Like, you ain't got no swag. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got nothing in the bag, my nigga. Shit's quiet. That one little piece you got, that's not enough, my nigga. Look at all this Versace I'm dripping in, nigga. This is when, before Biggie, you dig what I'm saying? Right, right, like, right. You know, like, I don't want to glorify this shit either, but like, when it comes to my grind and my hustle, I left home early, like a young age when my peers was in school. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. When I popped back up on my peers from high school, it, they was in college, and I was in at the same college with them niggas. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. Shout outs to um, Morgan State University. But I was on my trappings shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had the weed spot set up in there in Morgan, two dormitories, just getting to the bag. I lived on campus for like mm. two semesters. You dig you what I'm saying? I selling weed early in the, in yeah, the school. Yeah, and then I, then I linked up with my, my homies, and we started going crazy with the weed. You know what I'm saying? In mm. like, like 1995, my nigga. So since 1995, I, I, I learned that there was big money in weed because I always used to like be like, weed is like, you know, like the kill time. Mm-hmm. I ain't got enough money to go buy a brick of coke. That's how shit. I looked at it in the hood. Yeah, That's yeah. how I was That's how getting money niggas was, was looking at it in the hood. At it. I was like, at that you know time. what I'm saying? I'm just hustling the weed to get my money up. Once I get my money up to at least... 10, 15,000, I'm out of here. I'm going to go and get some Coke money, nigga. <laughs> Fuck this week. <laughs> this shit is cool and all that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I'm tired of socializing. I'm ready to go just... Yeah. You dig what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, money play. Hmm. So, right, so Broadway is the home of the Spanish niggas. Yeah, I mean, it was. Nah, well, it was. Right. I'm talking about the era. I'm speaking okay. of the era. Yeah. Because uh, yes. yeah. we, we, still, we, we, still, in this, we yeah. still in this era. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Right. Yeah. So... For at least in my perspective, being from downtown on the West, I always looked at Broadway as the home of the Spanish niggas. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Shiggity, you being on Broadway, how did you separate yourself from the Spanish niggas? 
outside of well, I mean that's kind of. I understand the question. You know that that's kind of self explanable. What, what I but, did was this because I understand exactly where you're coming from. So I lived. That's a good question. I, I resided, you know, on 158th Street between Broadway and Amsterdam, mm-hmm. which is Washington Heights, which is considered Dominican predominantly inhabited neighborhood. Absolutely mm-hmm. right. But on Amsterdam, you got. Got a little strip yeah, you got the homies. It's, yeah, it's the yeah, homies over there. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Debo rated all, all yeah, them niggas was yeah. from over there. Yeah, they Amsterdam. from here, right on Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? My nigga, shout out to them. So, At one project building, right? Yeah. yeah. I also, you know, like my, my headquarters for my crew, like my niggas that we all used to chill was 137th between Broadway and Riverside. You dig what I'm saying? That's like a block that my parents met on. Mm. That's how, you know, that's how far back that block Goes nostalgic. Oh wow! Me. You dig what I'm saying? I never. I have knew a that. couple nostalgic blocks. It's 137th, 158th, and then 183rd Grand Avenue. Grand Avenue. Right, right, right. And Shout then, out to the third. And then 188th and Jerome. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Like gotcha. those four things is like part of my HBO. My Bronx only. That's mm-hmm. like that's like mm-hmm. those four blocks is like my family roots type of shit in New York City. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So when I'm on the block, you know the word for 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 the haze at that time. Was Pude. Pude. Okay. So I used to be outside and I, I used to, I never used to be like, want to say the word Pude. Mm. When niggas would come through, like, what you got? You got you got Pude? I'm like, I got fire, nigga. Yeah. Because mm. <laughs> I just felt some type of way. Like, I'm Trini, like, I'm black. Like, yeah. I don't, I can't fraud like I'm something else that I'm not. I heard you. Just for some bread and sell myself out like that. You dig mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So not for nothing, I started fucking with the diplomats, you know what I'm saying, Taliban. She so started coming through. And it was these niggas named Jitterbug and his brother. You know what I'm saying? Twin brother. I forget his, his brother name. But those was the homies. Those were my homies still. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Hell and Ankasa mm-hmm, hell and shit. K- Hustle Man 145th, mm-hmm. right? So them niggas was on some piff shit, right? But when they came through, they was like, yeah, Shice, that had his piff. Oh, oh that jacket is piff. Oh, them sneakers is piff, my mm-hmm. nigga. And I got a little frustrated. Like, I'm like, oh, I like that word. I'm like, yo. <laughs> I'm like, what, nigga? You know, I had wild pounds all around. Niggas mm-hmm. never really seen no black nigga with wild ditties like that nah, on some real exotic talk. shit. On some real shit. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, I pulled that shit out. I said, my nigga, this is the piff, nigga. And I'm the gatekeeper, nigga. As a matter of fact, I'm the emperor, nigga. You heard? This is what the piff is, my nigga. All that other shit y'all niggas talking, get out of here with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas like, word, that's the piff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and that's what we change it to. I changed it right there. Hmm. And I changed the weed, the purple haze to piff, my nigga. That's mm. crazy. You did? And shout out to them niggas, because you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going to keep it real with you. Like, the word piff. And, I'm, and this is how real of a nigga I am. Like, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to the word piff, right? You know what I'm saying? I never monetized it. You dig what I'm saying? Because I'm a monetizer. I heard you. I came into the game with Purple City Entertainment monetized. Mm. LLC straight up from day one. You mm. dig what I'm saying? So when it came to the word piff, I could have did that too. But I was like, nah. You know, you niggas could buy all the weed they want, but the swag is for free. Because I wasn't into the industry at that time. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? I was like, Really, if you come fuck with me, I'ma give you some swag, nigga. I'ma give you some drip. I'ma I'm I'ma style your shit a little bit. Mm-hmm. Cause your shit, you fucking with me, nigga. Mm-hmm. I got everything. I got rollies every day. Mm-hmm. I got platinum chains, mm-hmm. platinum rings, cardies every day. This is since the 90s, my nigga. Gucci boots, Louis boots, when niggas didn't even know what the fuck that was. You dig what I'm saying? Only the rich niggas. That's I was getting money. I've been was getting money forever. Like that's that's just what it is. I come from niggas who get money. Who It's not even about money. That's just what niggas did. You dig what I'm saying? At the time, it's for survival. Mm. We just happened to be real good at what we was doing on another level. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Of course, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Of survival, though. Not mm-hmm. on some clout chasing shit. Nah, I'm listening I don't know, to you. Not on no clout chasing shit, just on some... It's self-explanatory, though, my nigga. Money shit, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't even gonna lie, that shit... I just left that. I left that word piff for the community. Mm. As long as when niggas try to monetize it, they come holler. Mm. Shout a nigga out because I'm the nigga who's gonna make sure niggas get their etiquette off of it. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like when niggas try to 
take their roses off of something. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Um, Me personally, when I hear the word piff and I see the color purple in hip hop, I always think of you. Yeah, I marketed. It was my marketing. You know when mm. niggas come up with their marketing strategy? Yeah. It was part of my marketing strategy since, oh, basically before I even came up with the shit. Mm, mm. And you know, the shit, it, it spiraled in a culture at a time where it was brand new and it was impressionable for guys like myself and this guy right here just, you know, coming up and actually being a fan of rap and a, and just a Harlem nigga and having a, a, t a crew in Harlem reigning supreme in hip hop. Supreme. Right? So, you know, I... You got a lot of lineage and a lot of history. And you know, I for one don't like to live in your past. Yes. Yeah, because you got so much present ill things going on and it never stopped. I don't even like talking about all the new shit. You know that. So we might as well. I know. Talk so we might as well it. just we might as well, go we might as well just categorize it, go back to go forward. Fuck that. Right. Yeah, we gotta yeah. go we gotta go we back to go. Right. These we, niggas is spies out right, there. Right, 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 right. We gotta go some old shit. Maybe you could catch some old games. Right. Like we gotta go back to go forward. Cause I want people to understand how important you are in this culture and in in my life as far as you know, just life and artistry, both. Um how did you link with the diplomats, how did I link with the diplomat? Well, I linked. I linked with the way I did linked with the diplomats is kind of ill, cause it kind of was like, it was kind of like a manifestation of mine. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. So in 2000, gotta I, see it first. I said to myself, cause I was hustling for a long time. I had a lot of ups, but mm. the downs was the flip side of the ups. So the downs wasn't like. A regular niggas down, it was like, damn, super high, super low. Mm. So low, where you at? If you go that low, it's like you in hell, nigga. Mm. Mm. The belly of the beast, it's shites the barbarian. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. That's how those kind of bars emerge because of my experiences. That's you know real what I'm shit. You feel me? Like, so I'm, I drifted. Nah, nah, nah. The diplomats. Sure, how yeah. you met the diplomats? Mm, yeah. So in 2000, I was what? like, I was like, yo, I gotta do some other shit. I gotta, I gotta like make some room in my in my mind and in my schedule to clear up for some new opportunities and some new ventures to go on. You dig what I'm saying? Right. And my little man's had bought like a little magazine from down up the block and was like, yo, check these niggas out. Cam and Jim, them niggas is doing their thing, right? I'm like, word, let me see that. I said, uh. I said, yeah, these niggas is just like me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, said, I see it all in them. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, I said, I bet you if I if I get these niggas to me, I bet you nigga be in a rap game, nigga. Cause at the time, the type of weed that I had was like only Certainly. Dominican poppy had it. Mm. Got you. Like the favorite niggas. Right. Like, like the favorite niggas. And you so, will connect the world easy. I'm connecting a whole different market. Mm. I'm connecting the brothers, the brotherhood. I'm giving pounds to niggas. I'm selling pounds to niggas that never even could even think that a pound was reachable. Like on that type of time, nah, real shit. That yeah. it was necessary. Real shit. You take what I'm saying. Like mm. what I'm gonna do with a pound of A's? That mm -hmm. shit gonna cost too much. No Who real buy shit. That? Right yeah. then, that shit was 60 what? And then you see a nigga like me buying everything up and doing whatever the fuck I want all day, all night. It's like, oh shit. And he ain't going to jail? Like, nah, that shit damn near illegal, bitch. Like, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I knew that shit, shit. I knew that shit since back in the days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the, my next move basically was like, I had got some insight like, yo, weed is going to go legal around in California. This, this information right. was like since 9-11. You dig what I'm saying? Hmm. And I'm like, damn. That's some crazy shit. Started thinking ahead. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was on 145th Street. I seen Jewels. It's like, yo, gave the nigga some weed. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, gave the nigga some weed. Then the following week, I go back to 145th. You know what I'm saying? I, I see Jewels again. The nigga see me, right? The nigga like, yo, there, there goes the nigga right there. Mm -hmm. Shut nigga shites. Mm -hmm. It was him and Jim and, and my other nigga Diggs. We go uptown. Right, right. We go uptown to my crib. Jim walked in my crib. That nigga said, I remember, I re 
you know, I'm a street nigga, so yeah. I remember like little petty <laughs> shit like yeah. this. Because yeah. this was part of my manifestation, me telling my niggas, like, I bet you I get these niggas some weed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be in a rap game, mm -hmm. nigga. I bet you, nigga. So the nigga came to the crib, he said, <gasps> looked around, looked at some of my shit. He was like, yo, wait till Cam meet you, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He was like, yo, you diplomat, nigga. Shit. The fuck? Where the fuck you That's been at? That's fire. <laughs> he was like, oh, where you been at? That's fire. I'm like, I've been getting money, nigga. Low, nigga. Fuck is wrong with you, nigga? <laughs> it was like, I am going to lie. Like, when I first met Jim, it was like, we knew each other for like ever. Like, mm. since the sandbox or something. Straight connection. It was crazy. Yeah. It was so bugged out that it was just weird. And Joel's was mad happy. Like, That's my nigga. Like. CJ, <laughs> yeah, nigga yeah. from my hood. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I told you, like I told you, yeah. you know uh -huh, what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like told you he's official, right? So I'm like, we just ran it up. We had a great friendship. That's it, fire. it was fun. That's it's, so fire. it's like my relationship with you. Like if I was to tell you, like, yo, man. I ain't hear my name in that interview, man. Yeah. You must not want no Kiki, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like, Say that. <laughs> <laughs> Say that. <laughs> Yo, did, didn't you make them niggas do that on Hot 97? Whoever said your niggas do nothing. Or, or, or did wasn't that the challenge? The challenge was who's going to break the Richter scale. Right, the Richter scale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Richter scale is where you measure the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the um, earthquakes and shit. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, nigga come back, I be like, Richter scale was like this, blood. <laughs> <laughs> you could roll up a blood or something. You know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, mem I remember a bar you had half a P32, whole P65. Yeah. That, was, that, that was the time. That was the time. Oh, and, it's, and, and it's funny, you know, um, first times I ever met Jim or, or Max was, was through you. I remember um, a young nigga being on the Trap Nigga <clears throat> video set. Cause I always happen to be around for um for for these moments back in the days with you. You always had me around, and um that was the first time I actually lived through reality TV, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I don't think nobody knew the moment. I didn't even fucking know. <laughs> but I tell you this though, I ain't no sucker. I never have been. You know what I'm saying? I've had a, a I've had I've had a lot of good experiences in life. Even the bad ones was good ones. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when things get thrown at me sometimes, sometimes I might seem cold-blooded. Mm -hmm. Like, because I don't give a fuck, really. Like, it don't mm -hmm. really phase me in that type of way. That mm -hmm. The reaction that people think that they're going to get from me. It's total opposite. It's total opposite. I be like, I don't care. You mm -hmm. know me. I know, I know. Because... You know, in this life that we live, man, the things that we do, decisions that we make, are made upon ourselves. Give a fuck what nobody else does to push. You know, people be like, oh, I was pushed to this, to mm -hmm, do this. Mm -hmm. It's all in your mind. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? Unless you have an open conversation, you know what I'm saying? And being transparent with how you feel with the other... You know, that's why when people die and they and at the end they want the the, the parent or the, the, the person who lost their life to speak to the person. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it could be some type of closure. Mm -hmm. So if there's no that communication, if there's lies involved with the communication, then you know what I'm saying? That's, hmm. that's a fact. Hmm. You know, you taught me a lot of verbiage and how to use things, how to use certain words in the correct way as to why I'm even good at or, or I, you know, I'm working on being better at being, a, you know, somebody that's hosting something. I need a backwards man. Please, you, you got, you got, you know, somebody, somebody, somebody give my brother some backwards. Yeah. You know, um, one thing you are is a people's person, and you understand how to deal you. and how to function with certain personalities. I've dealt with the killers, right? The worst element already in my lifetime. Hmm. So at the end of the day. Emotion, emotional people, it's easy for me to deal with that. Because mm. it's all emotions at the end of the day, bro. You know what I'm saying, though? Word. Word. I don't do creepy Straight shit. My name, my name is Shice because I'm a Shice detector. You know that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just can see the Shicey shit before it happens. That's why I took the name on. Mm. People think that I'm the Shicey one. It's not. Nah, you the Shicey one because you even thinking that I'm Shicey. 
So you're really sneaky. I'm oh. from New York. Right? Oh, my <laughs> shit. I'm from New York City where every everybody's out for themselves, my nigga. Nah, facts. In business, it's always been like that. Hmm. And we grew up with the with the motto of mind your fucking business. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, smoke for a long time, even with the whole Purple City and the Bud Lane, I was in a space by myself. Facts. Not, you was the only no, one. I was bro. the only one because I seen the vision long time ago before any of these niggas, anybody. I don't give a fuck who it is. I marketed the Purple. I made it fun. Let me tell you something, man. The Bud and this and any marijuana enthusiast or person who's really of this culture can can understand and, and understand what I'm about to say, which is the key of marijuana was given to me from the universe, bro. Hmm. It wasn't just something that <clears throat> I, 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 I'm like, oh, I want to make money. I want to make, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was a gift given to me. This gift was given to me in 2000. I've been fucking with the weed, but the gift from the universe was given to me in 2000. So my first, I had, I had different checklists of things I had to do with this gift. The first thing was to get money in a neighborhood that I'm a needle in a haystack. Hmm. I did that. My second task was to get into the music industry and not on some dick sucker shit. You dig what I'm saying? Or I don't want to be no rapper. I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to do that. I just basically. You had all. It was whatever. I was gonna yeah. figure it out once I got in. You, you dig got what I'm in. saying? Right, right, right. Don't forget, niggas in the streets getting money. So, trying to have some type of future. I'm only like about 20 years old, 21, the most. You dig what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah. So, that's what it was. You know mm. what I'm saying? I I, t I was like, yo. Got in with the got in with that with the weed. Got mm -hmm. in right mm -hmm. now. I'm like, yo, weed is about to be legal. How can I take this weed and make this shit legal right now? I'm like the music. I'm gonna market this shit through the music and sell this this music shit the same way I sell weed. Piffin stores. That shit went over niggas' heads, man. <laughs> yo, that's crazy, wow. bro. That shit went over wow. niggas' nah, heads, I'm man. I'm thinking wow. of that era smoke. That's niggas, cool. crazy. That shit went bro. over niggas' heads, man. That shit went over niggas' heads, man. The marketing, the marketing, the strategies that I was using was kind of for like um, record labels to do. It wasn't for like an independent person mm -hmm. to be in the lane doing that shit. You dig mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what I thrived on, like doing industry type shit. Niggas just would say, "Oh, you mad industry?" I used to be, I used to be hype about that. It was like a diss. Niggas just be like, oh, yeah, nah, real you talk. an industry nigga. Yeah, industry I just be like, for real? Like, <laughs> say word. <laughs> say <laughs> word. <laughs> I'm acting industry. Nigga said, yeah. I said, I'm pulling it off. Nigga said, yeah. I said, all right. Yeah, good. Nah. Good. <laughs> Mission accomplished, nigga. Because, right, you know, it's but funny. I'm not, I'm not like that, though. You know that. Nah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. You know, even being a young nigga, it, it's, it's crazy. Everything you're saying, like... I felt like the covers attracted us first before we even got to the music. Those like covers the incredible is these Mylar piff. bags right now. Exactly. Hello? Exactly what I was getting into. Because even with the Mylar bags, I will go on record saying in New York City, you was the first person to actually implement that into where it made the bags important. Oh, of course. Because everybody couldn't go to the West Coast. Everybody couldn't get... Before, they was just letting anybody in a dispensary. You had to have a quote-unquote card to get into the dispensary or know somebody in a dispensary to let you in. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Shit A1. Like, shit like that. A1. Shit like that. A1. The one, never the two. Shit, shit like shit. that. Well, what kind shit. of batch? Is that Perp Invaders? This shit shit me? All right now, Perp Invaders, you know right what I mean? Now. Smokers Club. You know, I'm, right I'm, 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 I'm talking to my brother as if I don't talk to him every day <laughs> and as, a, as if we don't own a company together. But I have to do this for the people out in the rear view. You want to take it all the way I, back. I, I want to take it all the way back because I want niggas to under... I, like I know that and that's why I'm doing it. That's why I said the personal party, you know what I mean? I, I have to... I got to get this narrative out so people understand how important... You are on this shit. Now, back to the bags, right? And back to just, not only the bags, just the marketing. <clears throat> what made you transcend your thought process of the covers for music into a brand, black market, 
with the bags, with the same structure that you used when you was putting out these legendary mixtapes. Like, what what made you cross collateralize that into into the bud? Because that was always something I wanted to know. Because you could have you you so fucking creative when it comes to being a Swiss Army knife and knowing how to do all of these things yourself, where you're not even outsourcing nobody else to do it for you. What made you take it <coughs> in that lane? Because it was many other lanes you could have went. You know what I mean? And it was many other lanes that the game was kind of going to when it came to the jars because everybody was coming with the jars. And then, you know, even before the bags, they had the casket era, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, <clears throat> for a hustler, for a nigga in the streets that's moving like that, I always felt like the caskets was uncomfortable because <clears throat> if you wear fitted clothes and you got a casket in your pocket, it's going to be digging your leg. You know that. Right? You, you can't and then, hide it. And, and then if, if the people on you, it, it is no cuffing that thing. No cuffing that, right? No, so, so that, no yeah, that there is no know. cuffing that thing. You, you that know. you know, if you if you if you rolling with me and you follow, you you know it's no cuffing that thing. It's nothing. That you know what I mean? So pause, no butt cheeks, none of that. Right. So, so the bag is you know the most essential thing, but then you up the ante with the mylars. Now, how did you come with that creative format to get into that? Yo, listen, man. This weed culture shit, you know, after going like this with the magic beans and going like that and watching it grow naturally, everything is marketing. So it ain't nothing really. Game. It ain't really nothing, you know what I'm saying, that's really new under the sun. It's never what you do, but how it's done. Shout out to Nas, right? Mm -hmm. So really? basically, I went to Cali and I went there to basically help the West Coast market identify give to give some kind of east coast identity because i felt like as consumers of the highest content of black market bud we don't have any presence we didn't have at that time we didn't have any presence in the weed game hmm. you dig what i'm saying zero zero and i just felt like that wasn't <clears throat> right hmm. you dig what i'm saying so i went to cali i got with one of my homies and i was doing who was it um I don't want to say names, but at the end of the day, homie from the Bay. My homie, no, my homie from LA. I basically did an interview with him. Oh, okay. I follow. Right? And he had the pound bags. And I was eyeballing them shits. And I ain't gonna lie, I, this shit's right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was basically eyeballing the shit and I was like, yo, that shit looks like I just was thinking mixtape cover. I wasn't even thinking the pound bag itself, I was just looking at the artwork like, oh, I could just bring back all the mixtape covers and throw them shits on that mm. shit. That shit'll look crazy, yo. Right? So nigga see me looking at the shit, he was like, yo, what's up? And I had already designed the layout for that type of shit. I was like wishful thinking. It was like another manifestation thing where I already had did all the artwork for the shit. So when I seen it, I was like, yo, my artwork will fit right on that shit, yo. Hmm. He was like, hey, you like that? I'm like, hell yeah. He was like, you got artwork? I'm like, hell yeah. He was like, go to my printing spot. Go, you know what I'm saying? And niggas will make you some shit. So they printed the shit, gave me the shit. And I had to figure it out. Like how to put the stick on, on the big pound bag. But I figured the shit out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, arts and crafts. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's my shit. And that was it. I brought that shit back home and kind of like, was trying to put all the homies on, like, yo, nigga, look, man, this is what we got to do, take over. Niggas, you know, niggas don't want to be under my shit. They want to do their own thing. God bless everybody. You know what I'm saying? I just want niggas to get money and be safe and not go to prison for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Facts. That's, That's all shit. I ever Facts. wanted. You dig what I'm saying? And to get money with niggas for putting niggas in the right direction. But, you know, can't always get what you want. Mm. But everybody's safe. No, I ain't heard none of my niggas going to jail that fuck with me. You dig what I'm saying? I'm with you. So, you know? See, that was the second, well, not the second time, but that was another time where you separated yourself from the pack. Where it was like, when it when the weed got in those bags, it was like, this is this, and this is how much this is. And it's no if, ands, or buts. You see what this is? You don't, don't even ask me what it is. You even got to ask me. It's right there. Look at it. You don't even got a finger. Fuck it. Look. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, well, I, I have such if, a if you know, you know. Game. I ain't even doing all that anyway. Facts. And and shout outs to um LB from Runs. You mm -hmm, know what I'm saying? Shout mm -hmm. outs to him because 
he laid the law down over here. I ain't even gonna lie. Yeah, they turned it up. You know what I'm saying? They turned he, it he up. Fixed the, he fixed the way people were consuming Bud. Mm. Because not for nothing, you know, you got people going to Cali, going to the dispensary. That's a fact. Bringing back their little treats that they bought, selling it to their homies. Come on, you paid $90, $80 in the dispensary. How much is the eighth supposed to be? Over mm. here, after you done got on the plane with the shit. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Traveling fees, not too, even baby. on some illegal shit, just on some like the traveling, yeah. right. moving around Real like talk. that for you. It's tax going to the That's spot, tax on that, right? It's tax. So <clears throat> you know he set the precedent, like yo, look, my nigga, y'all niggas ain't getting this good week for cheap. Mm. Sorry, we from Cali. That's a fact. That shit move across state lines as price go yeah, up. Yeah, and baby. once and once it you know go from there to there, you paying for the toll. That's, That's a you fact. Know what I mean? Um, speaking of Cali, so I want to say twelve years ago, um. Maybe a little longer, actually. It was this clip that went viral before viral was a thing. And it wasn't even a clip. It was a video. And it was the first official smoke session. And I felt like that was like... I've been watching The Godfather the past two days. That was like when Michael went to um, Puerto Rico or wherever, to Santa Domingo. I forgot. Wherever he was at with all the top people. Well, let's rewind that. That's when Vito was trying to squash the shit. Okay. After Fre- after um after my after Sonny died with all the bosses, that was the equivalent to the powerful people in the smoking community, um in the underworld together, you know, having a smoke session. And this is the first time I've I ever heard a burner. Um, I was kind of familiar with the Jacker from the Source magazines, mm-hmm. but. That was the first time where I I actually knew the culture that he was involved in, and it was on. I think Jordan Towers had filmed it. It was on World Star before Smoke World Star, the Smoke Smoke-a-thon. Thon. How how the fuck shit. did how did that come about? That came about. That shit was like some Joel shit. Somebody mm. saying they could outsmoke each other or something like that, right? They started like, because you know, yeah. Jordan Ty was filming a I lot of the, uh, street artists. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he was doing a smoke thon and he got Jewels on there, he mm-hmm. got Snoop on there. Mm-hmm. Talk. Right? I ain't y'all seen him. He was like, hold the fuck up, I gotta come talk to Shiggity. Mm-hmm. We did all those, you know what I mean? I introduced the cross blunt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember crazy. that. I, yo, that was groundbreaking, bro. Nigga. Facts. I'm I a black-white that. boy smoker. Type no, real nigga. talk. You know what I'm saying? I don't dab any... Listen, I dabbed. I did all of that shit, my nigga. And early, before like, that shit drugs, even... I drugs, my nigga. LSD, mm-hmm. shrooms. I did it all, my nigga. Mm. Is that because of the schools you went to and all of that? Nah, that's because I was in a drug game, my nigga. The fuck was you talking about? Mm. I was in a lifestyle. Mm. So these things, the elements that was, you know, and the shit that I was transcending into, like, you know what I'm saying? When I'm fucking with the hippies and all that, yeah, and they got I mean. the fire weed, yeah. but they don't give a fuck about the fire weed. They care about this these acid hits Acid, yeah. and, 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 and these mm-hmm. shrooms and all mm-hmm. that. You mm-hmm. dig what I'm saying? And us tripping out and plugging the fuck. That's what they cared about. You dig what I'm saying? Hmm. So, you know, I tapped into all of that shit, bro. And I got the knowledge from the elders. I already, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. Like, I've been just focused on weed a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? So where I don't, I don't, I don't really be want to trip out. I don't be really want to go to other dimensions. I'm already a fifth dimension individual of manifestation. My shit is instantaneous. <laughs> I don't, I don't use my manifestation for bullshit though. Hmm. Like money and pretentious shit. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't use it for that. I use it for like long term, enduring things. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? Like not just for some. Yo, we need to be, I need to be good. Hell, I'm good. Nah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I need a big chain. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, Bubsy, I feel you. Who the fuck about that shit? Ben did all of that shit. Like, like. See, we've been to Smokers Club before the Smokers Club was actually established, right? And I felt like that Who time. The members? That... Smokers Club started on 158. Really? In real time? Like, I'm going to keep it real. Like, look. I'm the gatekeeper for the weed, right? Mm-hmm. Or some real shit. I don't give a fuck who you is. If you talking about weed and you do this, you do that. Back in when I was doing the shit, I would feel some type of way. I would step to your shit. Mm-hmm. 
You dig what I'm Fast. saying? When I met you, your name was Smoke. Off the rip. And I was like, Smoke? How the fuck this nigga named Smoke? And he ain't over here. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's crazy. Word. Impossible. You dig what I'm saying? So when he came around, it was like, here you go. Now you're Smoke. Dizza. Kush God. Fast. Yeah, that's who you are now, nigga. I'm the most hot. You cushion. <laughs> you heard? Facts, though. <laughs> Facts. That's real shit, though. Facts. I, I ain't got nothing to say. Yo, that's, that's a, a cush, That's nigga. a fact. Where the cush was at? It was with you. In my possession. Facts. As the lifestyle, as far as not just smoking weed and selling weed, this fuck though, like, that's, that's, that's bottom feet of shit. I'm talking about taking it and making it a lifestyle and creating other opportunities off of the shit. You dig what I'm saying? I'm with you. Shout out to Johnny Shite. Shout out to Johnny. Uh, yo, I was telling the because, story the other day. Yeah, because that motherfucker... That he, nigga... He's a pothead. He's a fucking no, super pothead. Fact. He's a super pothead. He's, he's actually... a super pothead for not being a dealer. How about that? F- facts. Facts. <laughs> Johnny Johnny is the one that introduced me to Shiggity. And I remember being a young nigga, not getting no money. And trying to figure out what I'm going to do when niggas is like a deal right now. Look, bro, you're being pretentious. <laughs> Keep working. What you need to do, you need to get some weed. Figure that out, nigga. I always say it's like uh, the Karate Kid. You know, I watch a lot of Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah. I fuck wax on, wax too, off, yeah. nigga. Not yeah. even, not, <laughs> wax on, wax off. That's the yeah, life that's lesson. Nigga, I was, yeah. y'all was teaching me wax on, wax off. But it was more so when, um, when my man took Miguel to the pool. He was like, you want to learn how to kick? You want to learn how to kick? And he tied his wrist up and he Threw threw the nigga in the pool. I was like, yeah, learn how to kick. That That was, that was how I could equate it to learn how to get your own money, nigga. And, you know, y'all being my teachers in a way where y'all molded me in my mind to move a certain kind of way as to how I could be independent right now and do things on my own and not look for for just look for somebody to do it for me. You know what I mean? Nah, that's cool. Let them rock. You know what I mean? So, you know, I always want to give you your flowers for that. You you and Johnny, you know what I mean? Y'all y'all definitely raised me in this game as to how to move. Um, how did you meet Johnny? I met Johnny through a pound cell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That 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 would be how they met, right? I met him through a pound cell, you know what I'm saying? And when I met him, I was like, you know, I was already in the music shit. I was already moving mixtapes heavy. And I felt like at the rate I was going, I was I was destined to, for my shit to be janking because I was fucking with the right elements of what I wanted. I wanted street shit with my shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, the nigga to look at my artists and the niggas I'm fucking with, like, that niggas ain't polished. You know what I'm saying? It's like, doesn't matter. We want mm. frequency time. Niggas is outside. Mm. Are you outside? You inside. You mm. know nothing about this shit. Mm. The fuck up. <laughs> Learn something. That's why it's legendary. Because it's like a lot of jewels and shit. You dig what I'm saying? Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. That shit is mad funny. Niggas say got him on the pound cell. Pound cell. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Vish. Yeah. We, um, we sold the pound. <clears throat> and me and Johnny was like, I didn't see him again for like three years. Hmm. And when I saw him again, he was he was like, he was finding his way, I guess, doing his own thing. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. As far as like trying to manage people. He didn't know what exactly what he had his own vision, his dreams of what he wanted to do, right? So when I met him, he was like walking artists through and being like seeing what he could do for them, like a concierge type mm-hmm. of shit. Mm. So I was like, yo, come fuck with me, my nigga, what's up? He was like, for real? <laughs> I'm like, yo, for real, my nigga, let's go. That's crazy that you've like, seen that. You've seen his drive. That's crazy. Did I? I was like, come on, bro. Let's let's go. Let's go do some shit. Live your shit out. Let's get it popping. Facts. You you legitimized us literally when it came to the weed and the street shit. You know what I mean? Because before that, like, I wasn't Johnny's first artist, but I was his first official artist to actually, you know, I want to say the the person that was with him when the doors opened. That's still there now. That watch it, the bricks form, and when you, it wasn't nobody else there. I think Furman Jr. was already out out the fold, and it was just 
smoking numbers, I feel like. Um, and I think he was, like, just on and off, like, managing Keith Murray, like, on some trial shit. Because Johnny always found a way to, like, get with these artists. I'd be like, how the fuck did you do that? And when he was like, yo, you know Shice Bubs? And I'm like, yeah, Purple City? He like, yeah, I'm going to be managing Shice. He's about to come to the studio right now. He got the crazy weed. The cra I'm like, I know. He like... Nah, this shit is about to, you know what I mean? It's about to be up from there. I felt like, you know, that gave us the confidence. And That's when the Smokers Club came to that. To because prior to that, it was 158 Diplomats. Right. Smokers Club unofficially. Mm. Because I'm the gatekeeper, and these is my niggas. They rap, and they got the access like, like none other. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Right. And she was crazy. Right. So when I came, when we got together, it was like, now we the new Smokers Club. This is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because we I all had the same so vision with the weed. Because I'm not going to lie, my vision of le legality with the weed and pushing it wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't the same perspective that nah. you got now. You hated that idea yeah. back then. Um, I don't think none of us, I think it was envisioned like the same way how when we was younger, we thought it would be flying cars. Although it is no flying cars. But you know, twenty close, close to it in twenty twenty is kind of close to what I thought twenty twenty would be in nineteen ninety five. So I say that to say, you know, your vision was shit for for back then. Um, as far as us seeing us seeing it, New York being compliant, or us even being able to own a dispensary, because you know. People of our color don't really own dispensaries. Yeah, man, can't think of too many. You know what I mean? I can. Yeah? Yeah. I can Put me on. A couple, but, you know, my man's out in Boston, Pure Oasis, first first dispensary East Coast, black owned. You know what I'm saying? Talk your shit, Bobby. Viola. Viola, for sure. But they don't so, got a dispensary yet. Oh, uh, well, they got a nice brand. They have a great brand, and I, I love I love Al Harrington. Gas Shout out to Al Harrington. Right, right, right. But I but just say about black owned shit. Right, no, it's not. It's it's, it's not. But I just say that to say this is about business and you know our smokers club is multicultural, you know what I mean? That's a fact. Um, that's and how we built it. That's how we yeah. built it. Because that's that's who we are reasons, for these reasons. <laughs> for us to have these conversations, right? But the fact that, you know, we just opened up our first dispensary in Detroit. Shout out to right? y'all, man. From from fucking fifteen years ago, from all the lineage that we just spoke of. To now, a dispensary, nigga. We compliant, right. nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, it, for it's me, it's like in stores for real. Yo, in the eye of the beholder, also, but also, but for me, it's kind of like a default thing. Like, as long as I've been in the in the game in the industry, that's where I'm supposed to be at anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what it was all for for me to have. Because I'm not gonna lie, I don't. I'm not a good worker. Like, I'm not good at. Being a worker for someone, that's why I'm a, one of the owners of the Smokers Club. Mm -hmm. I'm the sole owner of Purple Vaders. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I'm a protagonist prota um, personality, so I like to lead the ship. Ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. And I'm an advocate, yeah. so I like to advocate. Yeah. I like to advocate the protagonist. You know what so. I'm saying? So that's what I like to do. You dig what I'm saying? And I like to also, as a protagonist, absorb information. You dig what I'm saying? Because I don't know everything. I'm always learning because the guess what? The economy always changes. Hmm. You dig what I'm saying? So hmm. you can never think you know it all. What do you what do you really know? Hmm. When the market changes on you. Some hmm. old shit? Hmm. Or do you know the new shit? Hmm. So my mind has a Rolodex for that shit as far as evolving, you know what I'm saying, with the economy. You dig what I'm saying? And the times and shit like that. That's why I've always aligned myself. Back in the days, you know. I told you I was very standoffish when it came to other people being like, weed, weed, weed. But then when currency, he was like really the first person that made me feel like letting the industry convert. Mm. Shout out to currency. Because he had did an article and he had like a little joint, like it was like this. I swear, bro, I couldn't believe it. I was like, it was like a little joint like this. And he was like, in a magazine with the littlest joint ever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, talking all this weed shit about him, like giving him all this praise. And I was like, that ain't no blood, nigga. What the fuck? Nigga was smoked that nigga under the tape. Cause you know that was our That's energy. That's how niggas that was felt our back then. That was our energy yeah, back then. Like, I'll like smoke that all them niggas under the table. Like before I switched the papers, but, I used to feel but like But instead that. of me having like a negative like energy of being like, fuck them niggas, I embraced them. 
Facts. I embraced all of them. Wiz Khalifa. I used to be in Pittsburgh heavy. Facts. It was still weed at the end of the day. Super Word. heavy. Shout-outs to, shout to Pittsburgh. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Shout-outs to Lama and all that. You know what I'm saying? Facts. You you put me on the chef when he was, um, um, oh, man, uh, Kev the Hustler. Yeah, see? You know what I mean? So you, it, it was definitely lineage. You feel me? Where's all of them niggas back and, then? And where's back then, too. Facts. So, you know, like... I just embraced it because I knew that, you know, even though I had like, I was the gatekeeper, it was time for me to let the game evolve and not try to be like, ah, I own weed. You know what I'm saying? I did like ha- have that like delusional mentality for a little while. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I was on some rapper shit. Younger. I was, yeah. I was on this emperor. I yeah. had to now have to live up to this, to my image of the hip hop shit. And I want it all. Hmm. Motherfucker, I could say what I want. <laughs> Talk your shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Right, so yo, when when we was doing Smokers Club tours and shit, you know, um, I always I always stayed next to you on the tours because it was always you know, yeah, I ventured off and we always everybody had their breakfast clubs, but you know, you big bro, so I would always find my way. We'd be in the back of the bus smoking, collecting Dutches because this is the time we <laughs> yeah, smoke Dutch, Dutch Masters. masters. They got be so, <laughs> Right, right. So we can only box. get the Dutch Masters from this certain gas station. Um, right. I forget the name of the gas station because I ain't been on the road in so fucking long. It's that big ass gas it's station. It's that big ass gas station, uh, the black and red letters. I forget the name of the shit. But <laughs> any, anytime we seen that gas station at the for a rest stop or we knew that was coming, we would go and get our boxes of Dutches. Um. My perspective of Smokers Club tours, you know, as a performer, some days were stressful because, you know, you just never really know. At least for me at that time, this is my first time going to some of these cities. So I didn't know what to expect. Um, Your POV from being a host and actually, um, you know, it it was transition. You was transitioning artists to where you made me comfortable because I know when I was coming on, I was going to get this crazy introduction and I knew I would be warmed up. Well, the crowd would be warmed up because you out there. What was that like for you, like being on the road and, and having that task to get the crowd ready for artists? Because that's a skill within itself. You Super know what I mean? Well, being an MC. That's, that's an MC, master of ceremony. So, you know, after doing Purple City, right, <clears throat> basically 10 years, because we started Smokers Club in 2010. You know what I'm saying? And when we did our first tour, it was in 2011, mm-hmm. right? So I kind of felt like I got slighted, you know what I'm saying, in the Purple City experience. Because we didn't mm. really perform like that too much. Right. We always was going through some shit. So <laughs> us going to do some fucking shows <laughs> and shit was like, it never really existed for us. I'm with you, yeah. We was more like mixtape artists and putting out music. And that's how we I made my money. And then we got a record. I had a record label. Purple City, so right. that's how we was getting our money and making money, but you know what I mean, mm-hmm. off the music shit. So when 2010 came in and I put in my final project and I kind of was free from that, I was like, yo, I don't want to rap, but I do want to be on the stage. And I do kind of want to do the same thing I was doing in Purple City, which was bringing out new artists and helping them evolve as, you know what I'm saying, being better artists. Because hmm. that's all I really ever wanted to do anyway, even when I was doing the mixtapes. It was like, put these artists on, new coming niggas, have them in the studio, be next to them, give mm-hmm. them some jewels, mm-hmm. let them niggas carry on. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? If I really, really, really like some niggas, then I'd be like, yo, what's up? You want me to fuck with one? You know what I mean? You know how that yeah. shit go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Get some money together. Mm-hmm. You dig? And I just, you know, as part of my role in Smokers Club, you know, it was like, yo, we're going to be doing these festivals. I got to host every tour for the next 10 years. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> give a I don't fuck what's talk. going on. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> give a fucking... Who's the best host of the world? I don't give a fuck if Oprah Winfrey talking about shit. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be hosted by Shice Bubs and Oprah Winfrey, my nigga. Nah, <laughs> what are you talking about? You ain't going to say it's my company. I'm like, I'm yo, Shice did mad shit, B. That's crazy, man. Nigga, this, so that's why we talk. He's a rapper, a host... A uh, exec, a designer, a manager, a designer. D- 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 Swiss, I'm West Indian, my Swiss nigga. Army knife. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit. <laughs> Talking shit. My nigga, listen, man. I'm just, you know what it is? I'm, I don't have a competitive spirit. So hmm. I'm above average in everything. Hmm. I don't care about 
being the best at anything. So I, I, once I get above average in something, I'm like, I move on to other things that you know what I'm saying. I want to conquer. Right. That's what life is about. That's a fact. That's, That's a fact. And then man. it's also about finding your niche though, during mm. that journey though. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And what you're good at. That's why I can take a bunch of things and put it in one pot, and it's one thing. It's not. Shice is doing a hundred things. Nah, I do one thing, which is marketing. Hmm. Talking hmm. to me. Yeah. Nah, I mean, he always, this is what I'm trying to say, you know, I have these, I have the pleasure of having these conversations all the time where he tells me, focus on that one thing. Speaking of that one thing, it's a book, for anybody listening, called The One Thing. Um, it's, it's funny that we having this conversation about The One Thing because it was instilled in me before I read the book. And the book probably reignited gave me clarity gave me clarity on what i know already and i suggest any artist creative out there listening go find that book the one thing um it's a white cover it's very plain it says the one thing read that book it'll change your whole perspective and teach you um and maybe put things in perspective for you of prioritizing the one thing and putting that one thing and focusing on that one thing and after you conquer that one thing, then you move on to the next thing. And um, <clears throat> I say that to say you taught me a lot of focusing on the one thing. Right. Like, you're a rapper. Rap. Focus on that. Conquer that. Get to where you want to get to. To where you feel comfortable enough to say, okay, this is functioning on its own. Now you can do something else. Right? So that's kind of the reason why I'm even doing a pod because it's like, okay, advocating. I'm advocating and I got that one thing, which is my base, which is music that's rocking. And you know what I mean? I'm blessed to still be relevant and, and be able to do a pod and still keep my same integrity as an artist. And that came from having conversations with you, having conversations with Johnny, having conversations with Dame, people that put that in perspective for me. So... Shout out to you, the Emperor. Shout out to the fucking Emperor, man. Shout out to all the OGs out yeah. there. Nah, shout shout real, out to man. the OGs, man. I got my first O from you, indirectly. <laughs> but I always Who say you got that, the O from? Because you always... Yeah. Shout, shout my nigga out. Man. Mike Boogie, man. I got you. <laughs> Broadway Slim. Easy. Shout got, out yo, to Broadway you know Slim. Broadway Slim, you know, that's the homie. You know what I'm saying? He from my block, man. You know what I'm saying? He fuck with you. And you know what I'm saying? He had it because you had it. That's a fact, of course. Hello. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, you already know. And you know, not for nothing, a lot of... Nah, but nah, on some G shit, like a lot of people, you know, be like, yo, people, they cop for me, they did this, they did that from back in the days and shit. And the way I take it is when they tell me that, it's not about the weed, it's about that they got money with me. Mm. Like, I got money hmm. with you. Yeah, I got money. That's a fact. You dig what I'm saying? That's a fact. And that's what all the shit ever was for, my nigga. For motherfuckers to <laughs> get money. I ain't even think of being you know self. Because listen, my nigga, I, listen, I ain't going to go down the roster nothing, but niggas who fuck with me are self sufficient niggas. You said that from day one. You feel what I'm saying? They learned a lot, my nigga. I learned too. Trust me, listen, Jim Jones, right? Mm-hmm. When, I was, when I was figuring out the music shit, right? I told you, back then the swag was for free. If you was copping the weed, I'd give you the swag. It shit don't matter to me. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's not what I'm selling. I'm selling bud. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? But then nigga was like, yo, bro, like, you bugging. Like, mm. All that shit is for sale. Mm. And guess what? Instead of me being like, fuck is this nigga talking about? I ain't for sale. That's what some that's what niggas would say, right? I, mean, right. Not I was like, oh, I get it. It's all for sale. Heard you. <laughs> Fucking heard you. Need all this money. <laughs> Harlem. Heard you. And guess what? I didn't have to do nothing that I wasn't doing different. Hmm. You, I, it's just that I had a different perception on what I was doing. Like hmm. this shit is for sale. Niggas is niggas is gonna bite on this. Hmm. Look, the whole gang is on this. Hmm. Fucking shitting me. Hmm. Forever. <clears throat> but it's about the economy. It's about the temperature. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know what I mean? Switch your shit up. Switch, right. the, switch the, the swag up a little bit. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know you know what it is, man. You right? the master of reinventing. And I, you know what? I don't I mean, reinvent. No, wait. Pardon I've me. Never Pardon self. Reinv- wait. I've can never I, can I get it right? Bro. Can I get it right? Get that nigga. You're no. the master of the reset. Okay. Yeah, reset, mm. is a, reset is a better word. Because I don't reinvent. I've I've been shice bubs. 
the whole since, way through. Since 1993. I spell it S. Let me tell you a story about that real quick. Let me get, get it. This. Shice Bubs, right? How do you spell shice? Let's think about this shit right here. Hmm. How do you spell heist? H-E-I-S-T. So technically, how would you spell shice? S-H-E-I-S-T, right? Hmm. Okay. Back in the days, there was an artist in 1993, okay, from the West Coast. His name was Shade Shice, okay? Hmm. When I had the, when I got embodied with the name Shice, I was like, damn, it's another nigga named Shice? I didn't think nobody in the world had this name, mm -hmm. right? Hmm. I'm like, he spelled his name S-H-E-I-S-T. And you know, I'm a smart ass nigga, so I'm like, I before E except after C. S-H-I-E-S-T. <laughs> and I wrote that shit on the wall. I wrote that shit like on like, on some like some uh foggy a foggy mirror mm -hmm. in the street. I wrote that shit. Shice. Bubbles. Right? I was like, that's my name, Shice Bubbles. Because <laughs> <laughs> of, right? yeah, of, of the champagne. Because of the yeah. champagne and I get money, right? I bubble it up, right? It's like shice bubbles, mm -hmm. right? And I'ma spell it like that. S-H-I-E-S-T. So any nigga whose name is Shice that spells it S H I E S T got it from me, my nigga. Mm. They jacked my shit because mm. I don't even spell it the right way. All right, you dig what I'm saying, my nigga? Mm. That's a Shice bub fact, fun fact for niggas. Talk to him. Okay, we need all those Shice. Okay, and, and, and when I got the name Shice, my name is Tim Timothy. Okay, so my first nickname was Tim Shice. Then my hmm. shit switched to Shice Bubbler. Mm -hmm. Then I Ooh. cut it from Shice Bubbler to Shice Bubs. <laughs> then when I started rapping, I changed it to Shice B U B dash Z, Bub Z. You dig? Like Jay Z, Bub Z. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like from the movie Fresh, what he said. But it was Chucky, like Chucky, like, you know what I'm saying? That shit is Bub Z, like Jay Z. Like you heard? Chucky, nigga. <laughs> Feel me though, my nigga? You beat that Z, spell it right, motherfucker. You heard? This nigga shit. You smell me? So that's the only thing that I evolved into in the emperor. You know what I'm saying? Everything about me reinventing, it's no reinvention. It's I've reset. been the same person with the same journey for 30 years, basically. Which was to conquer anything that I tasked to do. That's it. Hmm. Period. It's funny. 2020 was the vision in 2010. You're right. You was there. I was there. 2020 was the vision. And guess what? In 2020, what we did, we signed the paperwork. We got our dispensary legal off the mm. bud. Off the My bud. My vision was for that. In 2010, I said, yo, Dizzy, I'm not, I'm not trying to chase this music shit. I'm concentrating on the weed. My life is a beach chair, nigga. I ain't doing nothing but sitting in this beach chair. Did I not tell you that? You sure did. Did I not tell you that? You sure did. On everything. On, on every, our kids. On everything. On you know what everything. I'm saying? I That's pumped true. that up. I said, yo, 2020 is the vision. It don't matter right now. And hmm. 2020 is going to all manifest. Watch this. Hmm. And everything we wanted from the music, for your success, for us being in a legal space with the weed. Look, Smokers Club is booming on, on, on merchandise. Like we, like we put the work in the do. Like we didn't have a million dollar deal in... 2012. Fuck this nigga talking about, my nigga. Like, like I didn't sell. Listen, man, we ain't, I'm not even going to do that because I'm not Nigga trying. going accolades on niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to do that because that, that doesn't even matter. That doesn't even matter because that's that ain't, that can never be touched on again because that mm. already happened. That shit is done. Right. That shit is done. Another thing they did, they was up on the porn game early. Porn? Yes. Of course. We were, we were they was on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> we were sex. Shout out yo. to my I gotta, sister. I got to talk on. about that. Shout out to Doof the God and all that. Shout out, yeah, shout yo, out to Doof. All these shout niggas, out to my Big nigga, Joe. They was Word. on that early. I had all those DVDs early, nigga. All right, so. Uh, you, yo, my nigga. Speaking of which, let's get into the POW of the week. Mm. Oh, you got a POW? Oh. Points all the week? Candace Vaughn. Uh, that's my uh, sense. That's oh shit, sense. hold on. Let me get my sense. She could be porn star of, 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 of the week because check it out. You know what I'm saying? As my sis in, in real time, you know. I that's my sis too. I love Ken. Yeah, I, I mean, I we we know Ken. Yo, bro. We, we had do that. When we did the Playboy swag video right. in 2007. Right, 13 years ago. Candace was in that video when we shot it in the Atmos. 
So Candace is hip hop. She's hip hop. She has her own business. You know. Shout out to the pussy. I just saw her Instagram she, right now. She, she's somewhere in Columbia. She, she get, bug, yeah. she gets to it. She's out. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know Shout out to sis. Right. Shout out to sis. <laughs> he said she's out in Columbia. <laughs> He's so thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> she's out in the jungle. Medellin. Pablo. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. We brought Candace back for this one. Word. So we had another one, but we bring Candace shout back. Shout out to her pussy mob gang. You know Word. what I'm saying? Word. Pussy mob. Yeah, yeah, that's the name of her crew. I bet you do. Bring her up here. We're going to bring Candace up here. I'm going to bring her up here with the mob. Shiggity. I had to throw that in there because, you know she's, what I'm saying? She's, she's, like the, she's like the female Shice Bugs, you know what I'm saying? Well, her own time. Like, you know that's, that's the sis she right there. Up. She don't, she don't let all her secrets out the bag, and that's that. Nah, know, that's what you supposed That was to a good segue because I almost forgot about dip sex. Dip that, sex that was definitely. I'm learning, job. man. Yeah. I'm learning. I was waiting to get my shit in. You know I man? give you your props when they, when they do. All right, give I'll me props. Shout out to Cherry. And, so, and, you, and you got. You. <laughs> Shout out to Cherry. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Rocky Rose. <laughs> Cause Carmen Hayes was really the porn star this week. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with Carmen Hayes. Carmen Hayes. Yeah, Carmen Hayes. Is Double that the D's. is that the right? Carmen Hayes is correct, nigga. Trust yeah, me. Man. And she back from evasive ing- evasive angles and all that. She okay, so then. give me the rundown on Carmen know Hayes. No more, like on the porn. Yeah, scene, but she, yeah, yeah. This nigga so is many a, that's just my homie. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't follow you. her industry like that. Yeah. I'm with you. Bro. You know what I'm saying that's what I fuck. So Carmen Hayes for you. Carmen Hayes, check out on everything. She's on everything. She's from the DVD area. All right, give me, give me her description like you description. do. Description? Oh, she black. I guess she's she about 5'10". Yeah, she got Carmel. Yeah, 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 Carmel, if you're talking about skin type. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Carmel, saying long curly hair, very flexible. Okay. I'm talking about butterfly. <laughs> really? I ain't gonna never do that in front of you. Know what I'm that, <laughs> that was pause. That was, pause for that was crazy that you that tried. Was crazy. I didn't that try. was that was crazy that you tried. She has emotion. Don't do that. No. I was emotion. crazy that you tried that. That <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. crazy to try. Curly but, hair, all that. All right, tattoo, Calm Hayes. And where could you tattoos, find? Huh? Where could the people find Calm Hayes? She got videos before before the tattoo and after the tattoo. Okay, okay. where could the people find Calm Hayes? Pornhub, NXX. X N X X. Or your favorite. All my All favorite X videos. You know, I thought videos Spang I Bang was your shit. Spang Bang. I love Spang Bang. She's on everything. You ask me, she's on everything. And you can find her on the DVD. She's from TT Boys, Evasive Angles, and all that. She was fucking Mr. Marcus and all them niggas from that. Right. Yeah, pause on It's crazy. All right, well, yeah, Carmen Hayes, um, POW of the week. And shout out to Candace um, Vaughn. Candace Vaughn. Um, she's, always, she's always. That shit, that's, that's always on honorable mention. Yeah. That's, that's your PO of the century. She's yes, yeah, you can say that. I got, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple of those, but you can say Porn that. Porn star, that's your POC. Yeah, Porn yeah, star of the century. Yeah. I need a conversation. Yeah. All right, sure. I, I got you. I, mean, I got it you. Is what it is, man. Um, Bubsy. Yeah. Right, it's about Bubsy. Yeah, though, yeah man. Back, back, back to the bubbler. Back to the bubbler. Your sense of style, bro, because you, up, bro? you got so many different bags that, that you, that you, get into like my first introduction to wearing Gucci was was you it was you telling like this and this was 06 this is 06 07 right before I really got into the rugby shit you know what I mean when we was going to the outlets and we was going to Gucci and we was fucking running it up where did you get your sense of style from. Cause you go into many different bags. He be wildin'. Yeah, he and, and when the jersey era was a thing, the jerseys this nigga had, Bugsy his had jerseys, I still, I still can't back, find. Back, back in the days, he was doing the Gator Tour. All, 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 all of that shit, all of the Pele's. You got me my first Mermot. I, got I remember, I, I, remember I remember I came back from LA. I was <laughs> freezing, like oh five. <laughs> I was freezing in a little coat. Nigga said, "What are you doing?" I said, you look cold, man. Come on, let's go to Ballers. Nigga took me to Ballers, got me the big boy Mermont, mm-hmm. the $700 joint. Yeah, you, the big boy. You know, the shit you that know, you put, you maybe, sweating in that thing. Sweating in that thing. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to my big brother. Definitely got me that $700 Mermont. You better be outside too with that. Facts. Facts. Because this is the ever with that coat. And because you got to understand, he made me a target with that coat because this is the ever with, in a good way. But this is the era where, you know, if you wasn't like that or if you wasn't a nigga with some type of respect, you couldn't even wear a Mermont because niggas was 
taking your mermonts. They was undressing you with the hammer. That's a pause to take your merm back in them. And I had the seven hundred dollar joint. I had I had I had the seven. I had the seven dollar, the seven hundred dollar joint. You know what I mean? Shit that was making me sweat with a t shirt on. The shit I was wearing. Yeah, right. Five degree weather type shit. I was good. I remember the first time. <laughs> remember the first time we went to Utah. This is the first time where I seen magic. Um, I was like, yo, how the fuck? How are we going to smoke, bro? Like we in Utah. We ain't got no kiki out here. Bubsy always got it. On. Nigga said, you're bugging. <laughs> Bubsy always got it on him. Pulled the ounce of Kiki out. Mind you, we just got from the airport. We ain't seen nobody. I'm like, yo, blood. How you do that? Chill. Chill. And of course, you know, like many big brothers, they teach their little brothers tricks. I learned during the years. But that was the first time I ever seen that magician tree. If that's even a word. It's the first time I ever seen a pack of pear out of nowhere in Utah. And this ain't even... Hey, Utah. This ain't even... This ain't even for... To even really elaborate on... Because everybody knows my, my trials and tribulations, you know. I never leave home without it. But this is why. This is why I never leave home without it. Because... Going to Utah thinking I was assed out like the seat of my pants... Big bro had the ounce of the piff. And, and we smoked the Utah and niggas Utah. out. And we was only there for a day. And we was only there for a day. Unbelievable, so nigga. Back I back could back. not that's believe back it, back nigga. Smoke they boots off. Smoke they boots off, nigga. And push them niggas car up the snow. Fat. Oh, we facts. had a big jacket. <laughs> the niggas. The niggas was wild cold. They was out wild there. cold. We <laughs> went out there with the, the Murrays. <laughs> Yeah, them niggas had the littlest jacket you could believe hey, in a snow blizzard. Never. Mind we had you just out there with the 40s on and the motherfucking big Burmese. Like, facts, like, facts. Push that shit out like the Hulk, nigga. Like, and that was my New first. York, that was my first feature money too. Shout yeah. out to Big Bro. That was my first That's feature money because right I got paid to shoot to shoot that video. Hello. For that and and do that verse. So that that was fire. And I mean, I dad forgot about that too. Till we just started talking about it. Know what I mean, but that's that's the fucking lineage of I my big brother. Earner, man. Facts. I was raised as an earner, and that's all I could teach my niggas, my kids, how to earn and how to be self sufficient and not depend on motherfuckers. You know, only people you should be depending on is the people that you have in place. You know, playing a position in what you're trying to accomplish. You dig what I'm saying? Like, that's a fact. That's a fact. You know, what I mean, it's constant gems. I learned a, a lot of what to do. And what not to do by him telling me don't do that. And sometimes I'm go ahead and not do that. And I never get um <clears throat> I never get the I told you not to do that. He'd just be like, okay. And then when it goes left, and I'm like, yo, big bro, yo, would you fucking believe? He like some shy shit. What yeah, you want? You you know this, this you know what you was getting you know what you was getting yourself into. <laughs> you know what I mean. So to avoid a lot of those moments, now I just listen off the rip. I don't even try to wander into my own little fucking storyline because you know I'm the booker. I be trying to book different shit on some wrestling shit, and sometimes you know what I mean. Uh, it don't, it sometimes it's not good there for ratings. Go. Sometimes it's not good for ratings. And, nah, and, not when it's real life. and not when it's real life, and, and you know, um, emotions. Yeah, and and I, I learned a lot from you. I love you. You fucking one of the wrong. greatest motherfuckers on the planet. And you know, I Give had I, I had to I had to have my big bro up here and really get into this personal party thing. We had to do the it right. right way and let and let the world know. You know, what I mean, this is the nigga that introduced me to marijuana in real life as to why I know what I know, and I can be the Kush God. And you know what I mean? I'm, I'm Michael Coleon as Vito. You feel me? Hello. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Kiss the ring, bring the weed, continue to carry on. But this is the lineage. Smokers Club. Shit. Smokers Club shit. Shy's fucking bobs. You know, before I tell you to say the stupid shit you say, okay. <clears throat> it's, one more, it's one thing I was missing that I feel like I got to highlight real fast before we get out of here. Perp Invaders. Because that's a whole new brand. Right. Um... Perp Invaders is not 
just music, because music will always be in a lifestyle. Perp Invaders is a all around brand. It's as far as it's a lifestyle. What was your thought process into packaging Perp Invaders up and actually having that as a staple? Because that's your first marijuana strain, yeah. also. Yeah. How did that come about? So basically, you know, being that I, 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 you know, the slightness of when I say slighted, when I said slighted about Purple City before prior, it wasn't about the situations with anybody. It was about the fact of us being on this like platform and delivering content. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? That we didn't get to do enough, so to speak. You dig what I'm saying? It mm. was more. It was more fist to front. So when I came up with Perp Invaders. It was like all this reunion shit was going on and I was just kind of like feeling too much like weird energy from the other side. So I was just like, mm. you know what? I created Purple City. I, I thought about what uh, Chuck Wilson, the owner of Baby Grand, had told me one day. He was like, yo, do it all over again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I guess when I created Purple Invaders, it was kind of like, that was kind of like a reinvention. You know what I'm saying? Of something I already did before which was Purple City. I'm like, this shit is all the same shit. I took the weed and did that. I was like, how easy is it to just do a weed brand now? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I used to be putting a, the, a little in purple uh, invader emoji mm -hmm. on my post because the way it was structured, it reminded me of the Purple City bird. The structure of it. The structure of it, right. And it was purple. So I was like, I like that. Visionary. But then I, one day I was like, I had read some shit where it was like, Instagram started in 2010. Facebook started in 2007. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, word. I'm like, fuck Instagram. I'm making my own shit. Perp invaders. <laughs> That's crazy. You heard? <laughs> fuck that. Shiesty, man. LLC, shiesty. trademark. You know what comes next? You know what I'm saying? You already and, know. And that's how I evolved that shit. And I was like, I'm going to market this shit the same way I did. Purple City, all over again. Just hmm. on some weed shit. Hmm. Fuck. That's crazy. Man. Shit me. And um, we our dispensary will be uh open soon. And um, yeah, this fall maybe I think it's gonna be probably be open early this summer. Yeah, I want to say late late summer towards the end, but maybe um, but definitely make sure you go get Perp Invaders that will be in our dispensary in Detroit, um, the Smokers Club dispensary as well as the Job Stopper, um. Our Smokers Club strain, um, you know, if you're cool enough on the black market, you might see it before you get to the dispensary. But um, doubt it. But I draw the I draw the throw Easter egg out there. That's a fact. Good yeah. luck on that shit. Good, good luck. But you know, Perp Catch Invaders yeah. Job Stopper. Shout out to all our sponsors. Catch us in your, yes. in your local Cali dispensary. That's where you're going to find that at first. Probably, Facts. Probably Facts. next week. And don't forget to log on to Smokers Club. I was about to say that. We, w we just dropped some new shit already. www.thesmokersclub.com. We just restocked on the Ash Before You Pass Tees and a bunch of other Smokers Club essentials. Make sure you log on and, um, you know what I mean, you get your high fashion. Yeah, stop hitting online talking about I ain't getting nothing. Go cop now. Okay. You feel me? I, I, that, that's why every episode I'm like www.thesmokersclub.com You know what I mean? For all your high fashion Because niggas always want You know what I mean? Same way how you go click to go get the new Yeezys Or mics or whatever your preference is You go to the Smokers Club and click and get whatever Tea, hoodie, sweats, Money talk. scale, jars Whatever it is that you need You use that same energy And you go there before it sell out And when it sell out, don't call me Because I can't do nothing for you You know what I mean? And you can't have mods Cause mines is mines. What's that stupid shit you say? Hold on, hold on. We gotta get in. Hold on. Shout out to. Uh, oh, every, shout out to Contente. Yeah, every, everything. Is contento. that I said it right? Con everything contento. contento. Uh, everything. Shout out to everything Contento. You know what I'm saying? They sent us a nice pack. Shout out to them. Pugs by Strange. Pugs I by Strange. That. The Contento. I, I I smoked a lot of it. I, I got some Contento. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still got some Contento here somewhere. Shout out to them and all that. Pugs by Strange. Ultra high. All those, you know what I'm saying, 420. Nah, all y'all, you already know. Um, <clears throat> stupid shit I say? Yeah. Curls for the girls, ways for the babes, nice for the hood rats. You already know, show Broadway, ho. This nigga's crazy. What the fuck was that? <laughs> 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 That's my
my shit, Bugsy. <laughs>